The point of this research is to better understand how lava flows advance, because when crystals grow inside lavas, they make them much thicker and much less able to advance. There are many volcanoes like Mount Etna where lava flows actually threaten people, and so we hope that our research will ultimately save lives by helping to forecast where lava is going to be moving so people could be evacuated in time. One of the best places I've been to was in Chile the last couple of years, a volcano called Cordon Cauye, which has produced some really powerful explosions and an, an ash plume that's gone all the way around the, the globe, as well as a lava flow that was pouring out fast enough to fill an Olympic swimming pool every 30 seconds. And I really want to understand what triggers these volcanic eruptions and what controls the lava that comes out of them. Here's a collection of some volcanic rocks that I've collected from all around the world. And this one here was lava from Iceland. This was a fast-moving red river of molten lava that spread a long way down the volcano flanks. Whereas there's a chunk of lava here that's very different. It's filled with crystals. You can see these white crystals here. And these locked together when the lava was trying to flow and made it far thicker so it couldn't flow so quickly or so far. So understanding how crystals grow inside lavas is really key to understanding how they work. Here at the Lancaster Environment Centre we've got a special bit of kit. It's a tiny furnace that can reach temperatures as high as 1500 degrees C. We use this furnace to melt volcanic rocks. They then turn to this liquid and then as they cool down they crystallise. They, the lava thinks that it's inside the volcano once again and we're in the privileged position of being able to watch it through the microscope and measure exactly how crystals grow.